Hello, this is Christy from 52Hider3D, here with a tutorial on how to use Adobe Premiere Pro 2. Now, if you've been doing a lot of video editing, you probably know that Premiere is what um, professionals use to um, edit video, or one of the program professionals use. So it was used to make um, Avatar, or at least uh, certain bits of Avatar, and uh, Hugo among other films. So, but um, the full version of Adobe Premiere uh, Pro, uh, Pro, don't know what version it's on now, but um, it costs several thousand pounds. So uh, I think that's probably above most YouTubers' budgets. However, there is an older version of Adobe Premiere Pro which is available for free download from the Adobe website um, and I'll put a link to that in the description so I'm just going to show you how to use that and get started with some professional level video editing techniques so here we go with the get the um, a downloaded zip file which is ppro underscore 2.0 ret nhue um, when you go into that, you'll find um, a folder called Premiere Pro 2, and that's this folder here. So when you extract that, open this up, and then go into Adobe Premiere Pro, and there should be a Windows X, uh, the a Windows installer package which says Adobe Premiere Pro. You don't want that. You want the .exe file that says Setup. So setup.exe, so just run that and follow through the installation instructions. And when you've done that, go ahead and fire up Premiere and have a look. Okay, so this is Adobe Premiere Pro 2. It's slightly out of date, which means a lot of the encoders uh, are outdated and things take a while. It's a bit buggy because of the compatibi compatibility issues with uh, newer computers, so there's a few slight problems, but let's start by creating a new project. It'll think about it for a bit, and here we have um, lots of presets that we can use. Um, so you've got standard definition and HD and lots of different versions. So um, you want this, whatever you choose, to match what you want to output this to. So if you want a 1080p Full HD video, you want to choose 1080p from this uh, 1080p preset from this list. So let's say we're just going to use a 720p just to see what this is like. Um, yeah, that's 29.97 frames a second. 720p square pixels, you always want it to be square pixels. So that'll work fine for what we're wanting to do. And that'll just be in 720p, so it won't take quite as long to render as 1080p would do. So then you want to browse for a destination to save the project. I'm just going to find where I put this. Okay, and then just call it something. Uh, okay, and just click OK. And straight away we'll have this um, interface that comes up with a the timeline here, and your source view, and your program view, and your project view, and various other extra bits here. Um, so the only item we have in the project view so far is the sequence, which is um, the current order of clips. But as we haven't got any clips in the view so far, it won't help matters very much. So let's just import a video for starters. So you can go File Input, Import, or just press Control I, and we get up the import box. Let's go to uh, where are we going to go? And we can 
choose my title intro and when you click it because of a bit of a bug with the system everything disappears but it's still there so um, just click open and it'll say importing and then conforming and then it will pop up in your project view so to preview this you can double click on it and it will open up in the source monitor and you can press spacebar to play through in the source monitor like that And then if you want to add it to the sequence, you can just drop it down here. Like that. And again, you can play through it. Like that. Um, it will be a bit um, uh, sort of choppy, the video, sometimes. Um, I don't really know why this is. It's just because of the the way Premiere renders the video, so sometimes it's rather choppy, which is a bit of a problem. So you can change things in the playback settings to try and uh, um, get it down to a manageable level. So maybe sometimes using compatible makes it easier. Let's see if that's any less choppy. I don't think that's made much of a difference. But anyway, um, let's import another video quickly, and let's choose my, have we got a trailer video? No. Uh, let's use the other one, where is it? Ah, this new one, this new title intro, and let's bring that one in as well. And this just works pretty much like any video editor, except that, um, you have multiple video tracks, so you can drag this one over the top of it. And uh, if I zoom in, press Z and then click, press B again to move back to the move tool. So you can see that where this uh, video 2 will take over from video 1 as soon as we go over here. So, this is all fairly basic stuff. Um, most video editors work like this and I'm sure you can work out from other Premiere tutorials a bit more about how to do the editing but the bit we're going to do now which is the bit there aren't many tutorials on is how to output your video as a um, as a video file and that's because um, things have changed a lot since uh, Premiere Pro 2 came out so I'm just going to walk you through how to set up, how to export your video. Now, your first thought might be just go file, export, movie. And yeah, that works okay. But if you go into settings and video, you've got different compressors. And you can see this one things aren't ah, sorry in, in general we've got file type so we need to choose a Microsoft AVI or a QuickTime file so let's go QuickTime and then you have the list of codecs to choose from and there are a lot of codecs um, and there's even more for um, AVI so if you go Microsoft AVI you've got these as well in general none of these seem to in my experience work very well they either do make bad quality video or the file sizes are massive um, so what we do is cancel this and go to file export Adobe Media Encoder and wait for a second for this to pop up and now we get this view which gives us a lot more options about the exporting so from the um, format choose MPEG2 and, and this is if you're going for good quality with um, uh, a, s a fairly small file size it's not as small as modern H.264 compressors 
but it's it's relatively small. It's about um, you see 1.87 megabytes a second. So let's choose that for now. And if that's too big, I'll show you a way that we can um, export it to a smaller file size. But for now, we've got this. Make sure export audio and export video are on. And the video tab, quality all the way up to the top, always have the quality up to the top and then your frame width and frame height whatever you want so this in this case it's 1080p so 1920 by 1080 your frame rate whatever you want that to be and I'm going to choose 29.97 drop frame you always want it to be progressive if you're exporting to um, to anything that isn't a TV uh, and we're also going to change the bitrate settings so make sure it's variable bitrate one pass minimum bitrate is one target 15 maximum 30 and that's about all you need to change uh, if you know about audio settings you can change the audio settings as well but mm, for now let's just click OK and we'll get this save box coming up find where I okay and it's saying the file size is going to be 31 megabytes for a 17 second video which is pretty big really I mean it's not as small as a lot of these other ones but in modern terms that's big so let's just click save and this is going to render going through like this and for long videos this can take a long time okay and that's complete so let's go over to where we save the file there we go and we've got this export1.mpg and let's run that and we can see this is pretty good quality about as good quality as I usually get on an export so but this is as you can see 77 megabytes so that's quite a big file so let's go back to Premiere and here we can export again this time we're just going to use the standard movie method and we're going to choose export to and type in export to and as a file name export settings now we're going to choose Microsoft AVI or you could choose QuickTime if you prefer let's do this actually and choose something let's choose Motion JPEG A and we've got all this um, it's fine let's export this it's actually going to be a .mov file because we're using QuickTime so let's save this. This will export like so. So now we're going to ch open up a different program, which is a free program that you can download from anywhere. It's um, based on QuickTime technology. It's called MPEG Stream Clip. And this allows us to convert video files into different sorts of video files. So now that's finished exporting open up the file export to dot mov and we can play through this just as if it was in QuickTime player so let's see how big that file was that's actually smaller that's 46.6 megabytes which isn't actually too bad but we can convert this down to a really tiny file size by using H.264 which is a relatively new MPEG-4 codec that um, didn't work doesn't isn't supported in Premiere so now we've got this file loaded in we can choose export to MPEG-4 like that and we've got all these different options 
so let's go up to 100% quality and let's just ch check what the bit rate should be I think it should be 4000 kilobits a second so if we choose 4000 kilobits a second it's predicting that the file size is going to be 6.1 megabytes which is absolutely tiny compared to what we have currently Ooh, no volt. Oh, that's nice. um, okay so just make sure it's unscaled uh, all that should be fine and then just click make mp4 export to .mpeg mp4 and it's gonna export that to this uh, place which is absolutely fine so we're gonna click save and this can take quite a while um, this is only a 17 second video so it shouldn't take too long there we go it's written the movie and put it here yeah export to and this is 2.32 megabytes which compared to um, the original which was 77 megabytes is absolutely tiny and that should export to for or upload to YouTube in a matter of a couple of minutes on most internet connections so that's the hard bits of Adobe Premiere Pro 2 um, I might be doing some more tutorials on the other on actually how to do editing on Premiere but there's lots more tutorials out there on the Premiere so go ahead and check those out also subscribe to this channel for more Premiere and video related videos uh, you can check out my Facebook page my Facebook group or Google Plus page thanks for watching see you next time